Well, happy April Fool's Day, everybody, and welcome to what is now kind of an annual tradition. Can you have a tradition if it's only two years in a row? We did it April Fool's before that. That's this true. Is a, this is a new second thing. competition. Yes, so last year for April Fool's Day, we released a Don't Laugh Challenge Bible Jokes video. That's right, and you which won. I won. Frustratingly. I'm sorry. Not sorry. <laughs> um, and and so for some reason, it got like hundreds of thousands of views, which we were not expecting. A ridiculous number of views. For a jokes video. So we're like, why not do it again, but give Seth the opportunity to perhaps win this time. Yes. And do a trivia, because he's the head of the theology team. Here. That's right. So, yeah. you so know. If I lose, it'll be humiliating. <laughs> No, <laughs> it won't. Because these are ridiculously hard questions, I think, because right. we don't know all of them, but Christine, one of our staff writers, she wrote them all. And yeah, I she feel remains like she, nameless. Oh, that's right. Our nameless con con contributor. But she uh, she knows the Bible better than both of us, I feel yeah. like, with Simon. So she's written the questions for us. And uh, so this is, this is how it's going to work. And make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video, because we are going to have um, a reprise of our Don't Laugh Challenge yes. at the end for our bonus round. Yeah, just to see if maybe I can... Eek a victory out <laughs> if I'm losing awfully. <laughs> and so uh, that that's that, that's going to be at the end, but here's how the game's going to work, okay? We're going to have three rounds, three questions in each round for a total of nine questions. Mm -hmm. Each question is going to be worth one point, and uh, at the end of the three rounds, we'll have a bonus round, and it's a don't laugh challenge, and the person, if you don't laugh, you, you get a point. Got it. Got it? Okay. Got it. And then we have three lifelines. Yes. And so we have a 50-50... Eliminating call, two wrong right. answers. Yes, call a pastor. Call a pastor. And 30 seconds with your Bible. 30 seconds with your Bible, <laughs> which is all you need, right? It's all you need. Yeah. Okay, you ready to go? Let's go. Okay, here we go. Question one, round one. What pagan king wrote part of the Bible? Okay. A, Darius the Mede. B, Nebuchadnezzar the Babylonian. C, Sennacherib of Assyria. Or D, Necho of Egypt. What's confusing about this question is all four of them have quotations in the Bible. Okay. All four of them have like have a prophecy. They have something in them. So I don't know. What do you mean by right? I mean that it, the way that it is written in the Bible, it actually says that they wrote this longer section of scripture. Uh, then I'm going to go for A, Darius the Mede, because... He's the only kind of good guy in all of these. All right. You want to lock it in? Uh, I don't yes. know if we're doing that. Yeah, lock it in. Lock it lock in. Lock it in. All right. It is B, Nebuchadnezzar the Babylonian, when he's talking about his whole account right. of him coming back yeah. into cogency. He's like, I, Nebuchadnezzar. But, but then Darius has a thing that goes throughout the, all the kingdom too in the same in the same book. It's both the same book of Daniel. I mean, I didn't write I this question. I take it with the fact checker. <laughs> Okay, so the idea with the question was who actually wrote it. I, Nebuchadnezzar, da 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 and Daniel. Feels. Whereas Darius, he gave a decree that he wrote elsewhere, and the decree is quoted. He didn't write part of the Bible. Okay. That's, I feel that, like this is hair splitting, but I mean, I'm already you're probably losing, right. So you're probably right. We'll move on. If, question number one for you. All right, here we go. Which animal is not mentioned in the Bible? A, cat. B, chameleon. C, snail, D, bat. Oh, gosh. Okay. I Which animal is not mentioned okay, in the Bible? I think snail and bat are in the food law section. I, th I think so. Cat and chameleon. I think there is a section in the food laws about lizards. I'm going to say A, cat. That answer is correct. Yes! <laughs> All right. Reading, see, reading Leviticus, it's, it's good for you. All right, here we go. Question number two, Seth. Where is love first mentioned in the Bible? Where's the word love first mentioned in the Bible? Was it A, Adam and Eve? B, with Abraham and Isaac? C, Isaac and Rebecca? D, Jacob and Rachel? I feel like my questions are so far harder than yours. <laughs> <laughs> um, Adam and Eve, I'm pretty sure no love is mentioned there. Okay. But he is impressed by the wife that he finds. Yes. Uh, Abraham and Isaac's interesting. It's the only uh, father-son couple here. Um, I'm going to say C, Isaac and Rebecca. Ooh, that's a really good answer, but it's wrong. Oh <laughs> because <laughs> it is, in fact, B, Abraham and Isaac. Are you serious? Because he, it's the first time it's mentioned is in Genesis 22, a father willing to give up his son, the son that he loves. <sighs> My gosh. Okay. <laughs> Which, isn't that 
I mean, isn't that interesting? The, like the first time, that is interesting. It's, it's, it's it's love son. is mentioned in the Bible. It's a father willing to give up his son. That's really and then John three sixteen. That's right. For God so loved the world that he gave us his son. It's pretty good. It's like the Bible's definition of love is that's, the giving of a son. That's pretty. That's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Okay. Okay. Question two, David. All right. Who became king when he was only seven years old? A. Josiah. B. Joash. C. Uzziah. D. Manasseh. I feel like there were like a lot of young kings. There were a lot of young kings. And I don't know which one was seven. <laughs> uh, but if I remember when I was studying the background of Jeremiah and him like co-ruling or like prophesying around the time of someone's rule, I thought he was kind of there when Josiah was growing up. Okay. So I'm going to say A, Josiah. Okay, A, Josiah is... Incorrect. No. Uh, there was a Donut Man song. Did you ever listen to the Donut Man? I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> he became king when he was just eight years old. Anyway. Oh. Just so I was close by one year. By one year, oh, okay. Joe Ash became king when he was seven years old. Joe Ash. So, incorrect. All right. Okay. Okay, question three. Who hangs defeated kings on a tree until evening, puts them in a cave, and covers the entrance with stones. I okay. okay. And the and the question and the answers are. I could before you guess. Oh. <laughs> Wait, before, I'm not guessing. Before you give me the answers, <laughs> I think this. I think I know the answer. Oh, okay. I think it's. I think it's Joshua. Okay. Give me the give me the options. Okay. A. Joshua. Okay. I'm, so I'm I right mean, so far. <laughs> there you go. B. David though. Okay. C. Jephthah. D. Shamgar. Well, you like threw out Shamgar there. I think it was. A, um, I, I want to say it's A, Joshua, because not leaving up a body overnight mm -hmm. is a sign of respect, and you're not supposed to leave bodies hanging around right. uh, as, part, as a symbol of pride. And, and you defeat. think Joshua was a nice guy? And I think that Joshua obeyed that commandment. Okay. So I'm going to say A, Joshua. Seth, round one is not going well Are for you. Are you serious? Because you only got one right, oh which God. is this one. <laughs> it is A, Joshua. I I can think there is a YouTube commenter out, out there oh. who picked up on this in a YouTube comment. I had to respond to it. So oh whoever gosh. you are, if you're there, thank you. Yes. You got me one point in this round. Because did they point out how it's a foreshadowing of Jesus who was taken down, put in a cave? They did ask yeah. about that. That's yeah, right. Exactly. That's right. That's amazing. Okay. Last question of round three, Seth. Shortly after Israel's exodus, they camp at a place called Elim where there are A, seven springs with 12 palm trees, B, 12 springs with 70 palm trees. Oh my gosh. Seven springs with 70 <laughs> palm trees or 12 springs and 120 pounds. 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 Palm trees. Uh, yeah. This is a ridiculous question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I literally have no idea, but I don't want to use my lifelines yet. Okay, okay. So maybe I, I'm going to go out on a limb here. Because seven and twelve are, are really important numbers, uh, uh, but also seventy for the nations. Oh gosh, I have no idea. I'm gonna go A. Seven springs, twelve palm trees. Are you locked in? Uh, yeah. A is incorrect. I, know, I, I didn't know it. I, it's B. Twelve springs and seventy palm trees. And you actually guess. said the answer because of the seventy nations. Uh, because of the seventy nations. The idea here is this: is right after the Exodus, you have the twelve tribes of Israel represented by twelve palm <sighs> springs going out to bless the world. Yes. And the first place they camp is a symbol of how they'll bless the entire the world. The water going out yeah, into water, water the, palm the plants. Trees. Uh, that's so good. So that's I should have got that. You should have got that one. Ah, uh, all right. Well, that's the end of round one. End of round one and score check. What's the score right now? Okay, it's one to one. I'm feeling good. Feeling good? Maybe. Okay, yeah. you ready for round two? <laughs> I'm ready for round All right, two. here we go. Round two. Who of the following is quoted in the Psalms? Okay. A, Miriam, and they're all women. Okay. A, Miriam, B, Deborah, C, Ruth, or D, Hannah? Um, I, th uh... <laughs> I think the answer is B, Deborah. I remember uh -huh. several psalms in which the crushing, she's the judge in times when Jael yep. smashes the temp peg. And she has a bunch of songs. And she has a bunch of songs. And she's met, And so Jael's mentioned a whole bunch. And I think Deborah is like emblematic of that time. So I'm going to say B, 
Deborah is the correct answer. Yeah, that's a really good, really good answer, but it's definitely wrong. Are you serious? It's <laughs> D. Hannah. Oh, yeah. It's her prayer in First Samuel oh, my 2 gosh. that gets picked up in Psalm 113. I got that. So, never mind. That then Mary riffs on, too, about the birth of right. Jesus. I knew that. Yeah, I knew that. <laughs> Why was that the question, David? <laughs> All right. Okay. okay. First question. Okay. As you know, David, Psalm 110 is the most quoted psalm in the New Testament. Yeah, I knew that. I remember. So which verse of Psalm 110 is the most quoted in the New Testament? Oh, come on. Is it A, verse 1, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand? Is it B, verse 4, you are priest forever in the order of Melchizedek? Is it C, verse 5, the Lord is at your right hand and he will crush kings? Or is it D6, he will judge the nations? Oh. I feel like I'm between A and C. Okay. Because uh, I, I I think Melchizedek is just in Hebrews, although maybe he says it a whole bunch of times. I don't know. <laughs> he will judge the nations. I feel like could also be there a bunch. But I feel like, you know, right hand stuff gets said a lot. Yeah. And then sit in my right hand. Uh, that's why uh, the right hand thing's throwing the me. right hand's pretty, it's it's like, pretty important. It could just be the same, or the different verses quoted twice, and I'm stacking them up against each other. Yeah. I'm, um, but I've shown my hand, so a 50-50 probably wouldn't help me. Cause no, if you, I, already got, you, you already, already, you got, already got, got 50-50. <laughs> Unless one of those gets taken off. Ah, uh, I am going to, I'm going to call my pastor. Okay. Yeah. Let's I'm, call the pastor. Okay, let's call the pastor. <sighs> All right, Hayden. Are you right. ready? I got you. I got you here with the crew. Hey, hey crew. All right. Ready. All right. You got your you got your messianic psalm hat on. Oh gosh, is actually the root house. Okay. Do I have Chick Fil A in my teeth? Am I good? You're good. No okay. Chick Fil A. Okay. All right. Here we go. You ready? Ready. Okay. Which verse of Psalm 110, which is Psalm 110 is the most quoted psalm in the New Testament? Which verse of Psalm 10 is quoted the most in the New Testament? So which verse inside of Psalm 10 is quoted the most? One, uh, verse one, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand. It's a good one, right? I don't think it's B, which is verse four, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Right, yeah. C, verse five, the Lord is at your right hand. He will crush kings. That's my, that's my I, I'm between A and C right now. Or D, verse six, he will judge the nations. So I'm between A and C. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand, or yeah. the Lord is at your right hand, he will crush kings. I think I think D might might be like one of those weird dark horses because oh, of man. like depending you know, on how you like characterize the illusions, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I think it's mm, I I would say C. I C? Say. Oh, I was think I was leaning like sixty percent towards sit at my right hand. Is, did I, or did I, I C. C. I did C. You said C, though, which is the Lord is at your right hand. He will crush kings. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Thanks, Hayden. You bet. Bye. See you guys. Okay, David, I'm going to need a final answer from you. Man, I was I was leaning towards A, sit at my right hand, but Hayden thinks it's C. The Lord is at your right hands. He will crush kings. I'm going to disagree with I'm your a, pastor. He's not, he's not my direct pastor. <laughs> He's like a side bastard that you have. Ah, I'm going to disagree with him just so he can rub it in my face if, if he's right forever. Okay. And I'm going to say, A, the Lord said to my Lord, said to my right hand. Locked it in? Locked it in. Uh, you could have been foolish for not listening to Hayden because A is the correct oh, answer. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, that's <laughs> Yes! So, oh. so Hayden is entirely incorrect. It was right. A, one, the Lord said to my Lord, said to my right hand. Yes. Ah, I'm sweating a little bit. <laughs> okay, okay, here we go. Whew, question five. That was a rush. Okay, here we go. In Luke, so Luke's account. In Luke, what happens in the chapter after Jesus says, it's easier for a camel to go through a needle than for the rich to enter God's kingdom? Was it A, the rich young ruler? So what happened after he said okay, that, okay, right? Okay. Was it A, the rich young ruler? B, Zacchaeus' conversion? C, the parable of the lost sheep? or D, paying taxes to Caesar? I'm honestly gonna be guessing one out of four, so I'm gonna do 50-50. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. Okay, it is not A, okay. the rich young ruler, and it is not C, the parable of the lost sheep. Okay, so it's so either- So it's either Zacchaeus' conversion or paying taxes to Caesar. 
I feel like I have a better idea of where paying taxes to Caesar ends up in the book of Luke. It's in like a assortment of different like small stories. Uh, and it's not this parabolic saying. So I'm gonna say B, Zacchaeus's conversion happens right after this happens. No need to make you wait. You got it. Yes. Boom. That oh. is right. I feel Good really job. confident with myself right <laughs> you now. You should. I, I was like, I knew I should get rid of the rich young ruler one because it comes after. The, yes. the saying comes that's after right. that. That's right. That's what I thought. I was like, that's yeah. a trick one. That's because... a trick one. Yep. Yeah. But I didn't know which one to cut, C or D. And um, maybe really I should glad. have kept lost okay. sheep in there. Okay. Question five. What is Jesus most often called in the book of Revelation? Oh, my goodness. I... I, I, uh, A, Christ, B, Lamb, C, King, D, Lord. Oh, that's <laughs> horrible. That's terrible. What is Jesus most often called in the book of Revelation? Christ, Lamb, okay. King, Lord. I think King and Lamb. Hmm. I don't know. Can you go nice. into like your Slumdog Millionaire Mind Palace and yes. figure out a time in your life when this I remember when... <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't, I don't think it's Lamb or King because I think those are more implied. Okay. And he has called them, but yep. I don't think... So, and, and, and the Messianic Christ, I don't think is in there as much. I think it, I'm going to go with Lord. Okay. Since it's all about his exaltation, even though King yes. makes more sense there. Oh, you're so agreeing with me right now. I don't like that. Um, hold on. <laughs> I mean, no. <laughs> no, it's not that, David. Uh, is it Christ? seems so easy. Like, the Christ. Jesus, the Christ. He is the Christ. Oh. Uh, no, I'm going to go with D, Lord. Final answer? Final answer. Uh, your final answer is incorrect. Uh, uh, John is really careful. He almost exclusively refers to Jesus as the Lamb. Really? Yeah. Oh. It's a picture of, you see a picture of Jesus crucified as a Lamb in the very right. beginning and yeah. almost the entire way through. He's that called that, the Lamb. The crucified Lamb, the Lamb. Like, and that's I thought he, it was all contained to like f chapter four or The something. easy way to remember that is like the whole book is about the necessity of suffering for the right. sake of Christ. So the primary image is of a suffering Lamb on the throne. <sighs> So, there you go. Fine. All right. Question number six. Seth, here we go. Last question around two for you. Okay. Here we go. Who called himself nothing but dust and ashes? So who called himself nothing but dust and ashes? Was it A, Job, B, Mephibosheth, C, Abraham, D, David? Hmm... Job would be a really good answer because he suffered a lot. Yes, he did. <laughs> um, but I'm actually leaning towards Mephibosheth. Um, I don't know the answer to this one. Yeah. I don't think Hayden's going to know the answer to this one. Ouch, Hayden. Uh, so sorry, Hayden. <laughs> sorry, Hayden. Um, I have 30 seconds with my Bible. And I don't think I could find this within 30 <laughs> seconds. Um, well, yeah, because you have to look at four stories, probably. Well, I, 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 my guess is it's Mephibosheth. Oh, so you go straight to his so story. I'd go to, but that's at the end of 2 Samuel, and I don't think I could find the right one in 30 seconds. Um, okay, I'm going to say B, Mephibosheth. Yeah, it's C, Abraham. D what? <laughs> yep. <laughs> that was like the last on my list. I would have checked anyone besides Abraham. In Genesis 18, 27... Abraham says this, that he's nothing but dust and ashes when interceding for Sodom and Gomorrah oh. and talking to God. He's like, though I'm nothing but dust and ashes. And then Sodom and Gomorrah is going to become nothing but dust and ashes. Oh. Literary parallelism. Oh, that's Look cool. That. Yeah. Uh, okay. I don't know if it's cool. But... I mean, it's <laughs> tragic. It's tragic. <laughs> Absolutely dark and devastating, yeah. but okay. <laughs> All right. That was, but yes, that was a really good guess. Though. Okay. Uh, question six. All right. Is this the last of round two? This is the last of round two. Oh, boy. Okay. Okay. Question six for you, David. All right. Put your uh, evangelical literature hat oh, on. no. Okay. What does the name Jabez <laughs> <laughs> Honorable. A, honorable. B, enlarged territory. C, pain. What does it mean? D, affliction. I do not know the answer to this question. Uh, uh, time with my Bible won't help. Because it's an English Bible and I would need <laughs> you would some need Hebrew it. stuff would going need. on there. Or probably a more robust Bible than we were given that had more study notes. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I'm gonna go 50-50. Okay. Computer. Computer. <laughs> Delete two of the wrong answers. <laughs> what does Jabez mean? Either B, enlarged territory, mm -hmm. or C, pain. C, pain, final answer. Correct. Yes, <laughs> I knew it was a B because it's in the prayer. Great. And it, your time with your Bible would have helped you because oh. it actually says his full name there. He said, I, was, I, I called him Jabez because I bore him in pain. Well, there we uh, go. That one prayer is supposed to be like a microcosm for the whole people of Israel. Oh. Uh, so that word pain is the same word pain from the book of Genesis where Eve bears children oh, in pain. Oh, I see, yeah. And this book is written to a generation who was born in exile, huh. children born in pain. Yep. So in the middle of the genealogy, you have a man who was born in pain, calling for God to bless him and to bring him back to his initial borders. And so that's the prayer of the whole book of Chronicles. Well, that's pretty cool. So there you go. That's fun. And Fine. I got it right. So it's and you got fun. it right. Uh, so what's the score? What's the score? Where are we at? Three to two. Wait, I have three? Ah, three to two. Feeling... I, I honestly thought I was losing by the end of that round. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty deflated. <laughs> it's, gonna, it's fine. It's going to be fine. You're going to make it up in round three. Yeah, I'm sure, I, I'm sure I, I am. I can feel it. All right. Beginning of round three. Here we go. All right. Question number seven for you. First of round three. Here we go. How many people are named Joseph in the New Testament? Now, this excludes references to Old Testament Josephs. Okay. So not like the Joseph with the, the coat the, or anything like that. Okay. How many Josephs? are there in the New Testament? Is it A, two, B, three, okay. C, four, or D, five? five. Uh, well, I know there's at least one. Mm. Jesus' father. Hey, yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Okay, so we've got one, one Joseph. Yep. Um, and there's got to be another Joseph in one of the genealogies. There's gotta be. So that's at least two, which is the first answer. And yep. that's all I could guess. <laughs> uh, there might be like someone son of Joseph, like one of the mm. I could maybe the disciples like Bar Joseph. Bar Joseph. Um, man, and I've only got three questions left. Um, you've got time with your Bible, and you've got a call to Hayden. Time with my Bible would not help me. Just Bar <laughs> Joseph. <laughs> it's like, can I use Logos? Uh, Hayden might know this fact, so let's give Hayden okay. a call. Okay, here we go. Call in the past. He's using a lifeline. There we go. There we go. Hey, Hayden, you are my only hope. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've always, I've always said that I am the Obi Wan to your, to to my, to your to Leia? my Princess Leia. <laughs> Great. So, how many people are named Joseph in the New Testament? excluding references to Old Testament Josephs. So the genealogies actually wouldn't count uh, because it would be a reference to an Old Testament right, Joseph. Right. That's right. Um, so how many Josephs are mentioned? So A, 2, B, 3, <laughs> C, 4, D, 5. Oh my gosh. <laughs> right, that's how I responded. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I think you got to factor in there's, like a, there's probably like a plus minus of two Josephs that I can't think of. Okay, okay, so so a rounding <laughs> error of two. <laughs> yeah, so I think there, we know there's not negative one or negative two Josephs. Okay, <laughs> that's right. I don't know how that... This is the dumb pastoral advice you give everybody. <laughs> it's very similar to how pastoral... Right here. Yeah. Um, okay, Joseph Arimathea, Joseph... Joseph Arimathea. Sorry, say that again? Isn't there Joseph the Tanner? I don't know. I know there's Joseph's Jesus's dad. We've got Joseph right. of Arimathea, and then a tanner. I think so. Okay. Uh, the whole New Testament. So maybe. Joseph. 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 I think there's. I'm. I can think of three. Okay. Uh, if, if we're going plus minus. That's a. It's so if you go plus minus, it's either one or five, <laughs> <laughs> and one's not an answer. So three or five are my two answers. I don't think I know exactly how many Josephs okay. are in the New Testament, and I would not bet on that at all. Oh, that's your my only hope. <laughs> I, I, I'm not as much Obi Wan as I am uh, Anakin in this situation, so. <laughs> which is a terrible news for me. Okay, that. <laughs> That's great. I will end this call now. Thank you, Hayden. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> All right. What do you think? Uh, well, I have no better option ex except to trust the Anakin Skywalker to my Leia and uh, go for B3. Oof. B3. 
three is wrong. Of course it is. Of course it is. <laughs> it is five. He, that was the other that option. That was the other option. Mary's husband, Jesus' brother, oh. Joseph of Arimathea, Joseph Barsabbas. Okay. And the Barnabas in Acts, his name is Joseph, I but should've, he's called Barnabas. I should have just gone for five. Yeah, I just like go like, for it. It's a common name. It's a common name. Okay. Who is the first person in the Bible to give God a name? A. Give God a name. Okay. Abraham. B. Hagar. C. Jacob. D. Moses. Okay, I actually can't remember the name, but my gut is telling me that it was when Hagar was stranded and she like called God like her helper or her provider or something. So I'm gonna go B Hagar. You're right. Yes. Uh, oh is, my gosh. Uh, which is I think I think the name is the God who sees. The God who sees. That's the right. God who sees me. Yeah. Yes. And what's fascinating is the first first person to name God is like this Gentile, this foreigner, yeah. this concubine, this pregnant lady. That's crazy. You she's would expect like, Abraham, Moses. Yeah, right. It's right, like right. The first one who gives God a name is an outcast. Yeah. And oh, it's so she's good. Right. Oh, I love that answer actually. Uh, can I even win now? Is I don't it know. Possible for me to win? Well, the, the, you'll have the laugh challenge. Still. Oh, the laugh challenge. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. Who? Defeated a king named Serpent. Jesus. <laughs> yes, you got it! <laughs> yeah, here's your, here's your answers. Uh, A, Abraham. B, Saul. C, Hezekiah. Or D, Josiah. Gosh. <laughs> the problem is uh, you're going to uh, hate the, when you oh, hear the answer. I'm sure it's going to be a face palm moment. Okay, well, I, well, I got one other thing. Oh, shoot. It's just looking at my Bible. It's just oh, looking it's at my just... Bible. <laughs> Oh, okay. So I know Abraham defeats a bunch of kings. Yep. I know Saul loses several battles, but he also, I think he wins a couple too. Um, I wouldn't put it past him. Uh, Hezekiah also defeats people and Josiah defeats people. All right. So the king who so, won battles is not uh, helpful. <laughs> no, that's not a helpful rubric to go through. Um, I want to say Abraham because he's so early in the yeah, Bible, and right. we've got the idea of a serpent in the garden, and so that first generation of the family of God defeats somebody named Serpent. That makes a ton of sense to me. It would also make sense for that theme to, be, to resurface in the Book of Kings or Chronicles with these other kings. And if it's Saul, as in like Saul that turns to Paul, it's, it's not like, that it's like, Saul. Okay, great. Uh, then that gives me some less help. We talking I, kings. We talking kings. Okay. He was never a king. No, that's right. Uh, that's yeah. right. I'm going to say D, Josiah. Why? Because. Because. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, I just feel really deflated. I'm so sorry, And Seth. I'm like, I, it could be Abraham. It could be any of these guys. <laughs> Um, looking at all four of them doesn't feel like it's going to help me. I can't do it in 30 seconds. <laughs> Josiah is the last good king of Israel. Yes. So for him to defeat somebody named Serpent would yes. feel awesome it would feel right before good. everything goes terrible at the end. Yes. So I'm going to go for maybe there's a little bit of hope at the end of the Book of Chronicles. Yes. D. Josiah. I'm so sorry, Seth. I changed my answer, actually. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, no. <laughs> it's fine. It's Saul. It's Saul. Yeah, it's the first king of Israel. Okay. He, right? So it's like the, yeah. God's going to raise right, up right. a snake crusher. Yeah. So the first king of Israel beats another king called, what? how do you pronounce it? Ne ne Nechash. Oh, yeah. Nechash, which yeah. is the word for, yes. the Hebrew word for snake. Yep. And yeah, he that. defeats him to be the snake crusher. Well, oh, fine. I'm sorry. Well, sorry. fine. <laughs> We didn't know this was just going to like slowly chip away at my ego, but that's what's happening right now. <laughs> Which Israelite tribe is not mentioned in the book of Revelation? Uh, <laughs> I didn't even know that was a thing. <laughs> yeah, there's one that's not mentioned. Oh my God. So it's A, Dan, B, Gad, C, Naphtali, or D, Issachar. Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm, I might try to use my Bible, but I'm not saying that yet. Because if I can think of where the list is, I might be able to find it really quickly. Okay. Uh, all right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the Bible. Okay. And do, I, do I time you? Yeah, you can time me. Here you go. And w when does it start? When I open my Bible? It starts when I say go. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Just got to get to Revelation first without getting to the <laughs> appendix. All right, here we go. 
I should have given you a little bit more mercy so I could receive a little bit more mercy, but Shh. 10 seconds gone. Oh my gosh, I can't find any of 15 seconds gone. the list that I thought I could find. Is that helpful? No. 20 seconds gone. Where are you? <laughs> All right, maybe the 144,000. Oh, I bet it's 144,000. 25 seconds. Where are they? <laughs> Three, are, Judah, two, Ruben, Gad, one, zero. Oh, Close your Bible. Dan, Gad. Okay, I think I saw Gad. I think so, I saw Niftal. I'm gonna go. Oh man, I found the place where it was. <laughs> I think. <laughs> oh, but I couldn't scan it fast enough. What Israelite tribe was not mentioned okay. in Revelation? So I think it was the. I think it was the 144,000 moment. Okay. In Revelation, I'm pretty sure I saw Neftali. Uh, I think I saw Issachar, and I think I saw Gad. Man, I just don't know, but I'm gonna have to go Dan, A. Eh? Man. Final answer. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> I was not expecting you to get that one. Woo! I'm sweating. <laughs> <laughs> so Dan's really interesting because he's one of the first sons of Jacob to be not be born from one of Jacob's wives, but one of his concubines. Oh. So he's like right. this yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. sideways descendant. Okay. He's also, when he's blessed by Jacob at the end of his life, he's called a serpent. Oh. Yep. Samson, in the book of Judges, yeah. this ultimate example of Israel's lustiness and yeah. brutality, is from the tribe of Dan. Oh. The tribe of Dan then steals idols to bring it back to their own place in Dan. the book of Judges. <laughs> Uh, and the last time he's mentioned in the Old Testament is the book of Amos, where Amos prophesies that Dan will fall and never rise again. Well, there you go. Isn't that crazy? I did not know I, any of that. Thank you, Christine Kazar, our yep. unnamed staff writer. That'll, unnamed staff writer. <laughs> All right. Last question, Seth. Okay. You ready? Mm -hmm. All right. Question number nine. Last question around three. Last question of all trivia. Here we go. How many resurrections are recorded in the Old Testament. Okay. Is it A, one, <laughs> B, <laughs> two, C, again, <laughs> three. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Or D, four. <laughs> Define resurrection. So, so. Uh, oh, oh, it is not an ascension. Okay, because we've got Enoch. Uh, uh, yes, and we've got, yes. Uh, yeah, Elijah, Elijah and Enoch do not count. Okay. These are people who died on earth, who were raised on earth. And then, did they die again? Presumably. Presumably, yes. Presumably, <laughs> yes. I only know of two, and I'm actually really confident in that and don't feel like I need to check my Bible because okay. Elijah is the first resurrection mentioned in the Bible, and Elisha is the second. The, I, the people who do resurrections. Who, who do resurrections. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't believe anybody else raises a dead person in all of Scripture. Although, I think Elisha raises more than one person because he has a double blessing. Fra and he raises a son. I'm gonna say three. Lock it in. I'm gonna lock it in. That's three. right. Yes. That's right. You oh did gosh. it. You did it. I was like, come on. You can do it. We're rooting you. for you. I've been waiting for this That's moment. right, Elisha. It was he raised one, right? Yeah. And then someone was thrown onto his bones. In That's his, right. In his grave, right? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. 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 So even from the dead, he raised the dead. That's crazy. Which what Jesus does. That's so great. From his grave, we're yeah. thrown in the grave with Jesus. We raise like Jesus. Just like, oh. yeah. You feel some sense of relief? I feel so much relief. I'm so glad. <laughs> you nailed that. Double blessing, too. Double That's blessing, awesome. yeah. Final question, David. Okay. Who is called most blessed of women? Who is called most, most blessed, blessed of, women? of women? A, Ruth. B, the beloved in the Song of Songs. Is it C, JL? Or D, Mary. It's D, Mary. Okay. Because her, right, her sister calls her that when she, when she sees her and John jumps in her Okay. Room. I think that's it. Lock it in? Yeah. Incorrect. What? Uh, <laughs> what? I <laughs> thought that was, was it. blew my mind too. What? No. The most blessed. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> the most blessed of women is actually JL, who takes the tent peg and smashes it into yeah. Cicero's skull. She's called the most blessed of women. What? That's right. I thought... Yeah, Mary's oh called my blessed, gosh. but not most blessed of women. You guys are killing the me The most here. blessed of women is the woman who killed oh the king, gosh. Cicero. Fine. A and a bowl of milk. And a bowl of milk. And a bowl of milk. Okay. So the scores are at, I believe, five to you, three to three me. Three to you. So I have to not laugh at all. Yep. I'm going to try my hardest. And you're going to try your hardest. Yep. Okay, here we go. Okay. 
Uh, do you want to keep the same order? Me yes. first? Yes, yes. Okay. Don't. Seth, look at me. Don't laugh. <laughs> no, Seth! Come on, man. <laughs> Get it together. Okay. You ready? I need, I, I mean, come on. Okay. You got this. How do you greet women in the Bible? Politely. Mm. You say, Amos. Like, Amos. Amos. I am very safe. <laughs> I am very all safe. All right, okay. all right, all right, all right. According to the book of Exodus, how was Israel born? According to the book of Exodus, how was Israel born? I don't know. By C-section. <laughs> That's really funny. Yeah. That's horrible. <laughs> I, th I thought I could fight through just it. Just like the stomach is split yeah, apart. Yeah, that's what did it for so me. Yeah, you don't have to go into detail. My wife had two of them. I'm good. Okay. Yeah, all right. Which book of the Bible is in Lord of the Rings? This is, this is dangerous territory. Oh, axe and my axe. Gimli? I love axe. it. Axe. I love it. I'm not laughing. Come on. I love it, but I'm not laughing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right, all right, all right. What would you call a TV show about Job and his friends? A TV show about Job and his friends. I don't know. This is us. This is us. 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 Oh, that was too much of a thinker for uh, me. I didn't get around the back. Okay. Okay. Last round. Okay. I think I've lost, but let's laugh. Well, I actually have a medical question for you. Okay. Uh, I know you're allergic to chicken. I am allergic to chicken. Which that's, is a, a that's poultry. a real fact. That's a real fact <laughs> about Seth. But I didn't know that you are also allergic to the Old Testament, Seth. Uh, yeah, look, I think you have a little midrash on you right here. <laughs> That's all I got! <laughs> that was so good. Oh. All right, bring it home. Uh, how were men initiated into Gideon's armies? Gideon's armies. Okay. Oh, Gideon's army. Oh, okay. How yeah, were they yeah, initiated yeah, yeah. I don't into Gideon's army? They did laps. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, it was the face that did it. Oh, man. Okay, what's the final uh, score? the final score? Six to five? I uh, did it! Again. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. I uh, man, I've that lost was two years in a row. Two years in a row. Next year we'll have to do Next something. Year will be I, yeah, yeah. My time to shy. I think it, you shown well though. Thank you, you know. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us, for laughing yeah. with us. This has been awesome. Thank you guys. And if this is your first introduction to spoken gospel, we actually spend a lot of time going deep into That's every right. book of the Bible, coming alongside you, explaining what you're reading, so you're not it's not all trivia to you. You know, we don't just yeah. want it to it feel actually like a mean bunch of, something. Feel you feel something. You feel yeah. something. Yeah. And so we try to come alongside you wherever you are in your Bible to explain what you're reading and how it points to Jesus. So to find all of our free resources, go to spokengospel.com. We'll see you next time.